And I think uh, this way of working to really produce uh, many alternatives is, is a very important way of making these things better. Mm -hmm. But producing alternatives, what do you mean? Uh, are you referring to a planning stage or a practice stage? I think you can continue in all cases. With, I think it's extremely important that the first uh, the law of strategic phase to uh, do it because then you have it, the uncertainty sort of larger in the, the larger scale. But of course, it should continue all the way down to the deep. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think we'll send them here. So, yeah, first, no, absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's very important to think in terms of what ifs. Mm -hmm. This kind of things, and, and also in terms of planning, not being just one function that one part of the city undertakes, but it's a communal, it's a kind of breaking down the barriers between departments and stakeholders, and having a variety of disciplines and professions involved in this what ifs thinking. And I think that would begin to slowly, slowly help to change the mindsets of the people who are tasked with implementing these changes. So not just one person working in a kind of variety of teams and, and, and professions, etc., and working on what if set of scenarios. So, so sort of toying with a slick of a different, uh, yes. different alternatives and keeping up the mind. Keeping up the mind, yeah. thanks to the contribution of a variety of stakeholders around the table. I don't mean just consultation for the sake of it. I mean people actively participating from the, from the perspective of discipline, profession, etc. So Art basically, it means ecologies. Yes. So basically, boiling down to the individual ability to participate. Yeah. Okay. The women are participating in the first of all. Marcus and then. I think there's an important role to provocation in, in, in everyday practice. Uh, our role to provoke there, because I think to provoking what is possible uh, if the if the different stakeholders work together in a different way. We have so many projects on daily basis. Some projects in the pipeline here as well, which are either approached in a sectoral way or approached from a purely opportunistic investment point of view. I think we need to provoke what is possible if you put these projects at discussion. Uh, in a larger context, even with the citizens, to see what role could they have to mobilize certain forces in the whole, uh, in the whole uh, urban system, in a way to optimize the system and such that they don't remain like they usually may remain single pieces which are completely disconnected from the context. And I think that provocation in practice doesn't have sufficient enough because we tend to jump time horizons to provoke rather than provoke today. So not provocation for provocation's sake, no. but with, with a definite objective. To, to, to yes. get people together, which tend not to work with each other. Yeah. I think that the strategies of working that we have been implementing as a professional as urban designers for, for the last generation, especially since the modern movement, it was actually towards a solution. We have a problem, we have a solution. That actually stopped us, what everyone is saying here as well. So I think that... Um, Never because of that issue, because we can't set simple rules. We can't say it has to be skyscrapers, it has to be blocks, it has to be that or that. What we need is actually, ideally, the board we have here for this week will be here for 20 years. I don't have to, would like to move to Gothenburg, but uh, <laughs> that's, it's maybe depends on what, what you pay then. So, uh, but it's needed, it's needed, it's needed this kind of, of advice or of decision boards that are strong enough to take over such a process, also over the time the politicians change all the time. Most of the time is one person, but with one person also there is the difficulty of creating a dictatorship kind of situation. In some cases, a good external board, and then it could be a new way of, of, of getting this kind of flexible flow mm -hmm. directed a little bit, and uh, so with a lot of power. I think it's for creativity, for people's creativity. I think the participation aspect is very important in, in, in our public, at least in Nordic countries. Uh, is taken care of, but it's not taken care of always in a creative way. You, you consult when you have a project. You don't take it from the grassroots, and, and you don't give space in the city free for people to act themselves. I mean, uh, we are, are a little bit reluctant to take over spaces. Uh, and in other countries, it doesn't work like that. Why, why not? Please, can you use the microphone? He has a microphone. Yeah, okay. So it's reluctant to. to uh, to use the free spaces that exist in the city. Um, I mean, my father come here, he, he, he was Italian, he's Italian, and, and he was the only one who went in and planted tomatoes on, a, on the ground inside, in, inside an industrial area. 
I mean, towards the 70s, so he, he was, you know, taking taking the things in his hands, and nobody else did it. So I mean, these these opportunities for people, and now we have the opportunity that there are a lot of people from other countries coming into uh, Sweden. Use also these opportunities to to create a more vivid city, a more active city, where people really do the city themselves. So promote pioneering. Yeah. Say, and not be, not be yeah, so afraid, your own letting city. go. Your own city, you know. Yeah, but also hang out more, get out more, you know, get out of the office more and, and observe and see what is happening. Because that that happening tells your story about your city, which you, you need to be aware of. Hmm? Uh, to supplement that, maybe this workshop should have been held in the uh, River City Square, in the river, in the water, somewhere. Yes. <laughs> on the water, on, on, on some <laughs> island. You know, we're on the ship in the area. But, but maybe, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, to, as you just yes, underlined, the importance of what has been said, that we can have uh, lift out the planning processes uh, on the sides. So maybe that was also, has been an old tradition of this, uh, in, in former the case that the architects and planners were sort of working on the side. From introducing people into their work and so on. So, so it, this, this is a new uh, sort of interest of this kind of processes. How, how did you perceive uh, the way you're working in the workshop? Because it's quite yeah. unusual that I understand that uh, teams are to put, first of all, work together with other teams, other teams, and then share what they're doing, their great individual ideas, with other people at an early stage. So, how did you feel about it? How was this uh, frustrating or stimulating? Or? No, I greatly enjoy it. I would like to congratulate Gothenburg again for being able to set up this type of process because it's so much more valuable than to do any international competition where you get some kind of abstract advice from people who have looked at it and only their four doors. And I highly enjoy these environments because only this complexity and this uh, of, of uh, mm -hmm. interests uh, all around, uh, which creates sufficient sensitivity for, for what is what is really at stake and what we can really work with. So I think this is uh, I hugely uh, enjoyed my time and uh, I'm, I'm hopefully uh, uh, able to. <laughs> no, I, I hope I, I hope that you are able to continue this openness uh, to carry through. Uh, with that project and don't break it down to another small competition. Oh, to follow that thing, you got an open invitation. Martin, would you have no, I was obviously not, not, uh, not really serious. We, we enjoyed it, we suffered too, so I don't know, it's electrical, like the city is full of dilemmas. So one thing I would like to contradict uh, you actually from your presentation, having the chance to do it in public, uh, is that obviously the next step, and it's very new, the design is where, where systems meet sensuality. So I think that the next step is also to get to do things formally so that they get attractive also forms, you know. Mm -hmm. The sunglasses you need but they have to look good from taking them off and on, you know. Mm -hmm. Again really necessity cool. to fashion. So and Very this I think it's it's an important mm -hmm. case to, to get this process oriented thinking into a object or for me object is neighborhood, the city or whatever, but I don't see I don't like the idea of dividing these two things so much. I think that content and surface or content and form are two things of the same you can't do one without, without the other, and they shouldn't, we shouldn't provoke the conflict between these two. There are good forms with good content, and there are stupid contents with beautiful forms, and there are, I don't know, whatever. But in the end, in the end, I think these two things have to be brought together to really get good results. So the next step maybe should be, as for you starting for the 2021, because the start point has to be a sexy start point, you know, you need a color goal. So the next point is maybe to do a reasonable and good competition for this bridge flow that you have the money for anyway. So and get a good bridge, but it's really hard because there are no architects able to do good bridges. You know? Yet. No. Oh, there he, are he's, 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 uh, yes. <laughs> and he was standing right next to you. But sometimes you don't see what's so close to you, which has been obvious through <laughs> the many parts of this project where you've highlighted being here and then you guys fast the places we tend to forget. Uh, I'd like to get back to the cultural uh, agenda, I don't know if I dare say it, but uh, the culture, culture in Gothenburg.